Thank you, uh, Neha ji. Hope my screen is visible now. Can I proceed? Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Namaste, everyone. And uh, today I'm going to deliver the talk on millets. So before we start, uh, I would like to take the blessings of the Almighty. Om Shubham Karoti Kalyanam Arogyam Dhanasam Padam Shatru Bhuddhi Vinashaya Deepa Jyoti Namastute Deepa Jyoti Parabrahma Deepa Jyoti Janardana Deepo Haratu Me Papam Deepa Jyoti Namastute Namaste everyone. The topic uh, which I am going to discuss today is importance of millets in day-to-day -day life. Ayurveda overview. Yeah. So before uh, we start today's session, I would like to just uh, uh, mention one small story because we all know that when we say about millets, it is the term millets is like it's it's uh, since one or two uh, years, everyone are like uh, fond of this terminology millet, but it's not like that. Even in 15th century, he is the uh, Kanaka Dasa, one of the uh, famous poet of uh, South India, preferably he belongs to Karnataka. So in Karnataka, there is a district called as Haveri. So in Haveri, uh, so in uh, Badagrama, he, he, uh, he is from Badagrama. So here, actually, initially he was a warrior, later he converted uh, as a poet. So he wrote numerous uh, uh, poetry. So among them, there is a one very important poetry, which preferably refers to the Ramadhanya, that is Ramadhanya Charita. So he wrote like Hari Bhakta Sara, Ramadhanya Charita, Mohana Tarangini, Nala Charitre. So numerous uh, Krutis he wrote. But among them, Ramadhanya Charita, I think this is the very uh, like uh, to, to note down on this event. Because in Ramadhana Charitya, so he, he described one story. So how exactly is story right that after uh, like uh, Sri Ram, after uh, Ram, uh, Sita, and uh, uh, Hanuman and Lakshman, after uh, uh, getting the victory from the Ravana, when they are going back to the uh, uh, Ayodhya, so in the in the way he, he took the shelter in the Ashrama Gautama Ashrama. So there was a Muni called as Gautama. So he he gave the Ashrama uh, Ashray to the all these uh, uh, Rama and other uh, people. So at that time and uh, to appease the all the. Uh, people so uh, even gautama he he uh, served with the uh, numerous uh, food recipes food food dishes so after having rama after having the all the dishes rama he asked to gautama muni so you served all the dhanyas but among them uh, i feel that this uh, the uh, recipe which you served of the uh, uh, what we call this uh, ragi that is uh, ragi uh, that a finger millet was very tastier uh, how come it is tastier can you tell me the importance of uh, ragi so Gautam Muni started saying that ragi, ragi is uh, all the uh, like advantage of the ragi. If you take the ragi in excess amount, how it is going to help help our body? Everything he started go uh, telling about the ragi. At that time, at that time the other dhanyas, especially like batta in Kannada, we say batta is nothing but the paddy. So paddy started saying that why you are praising only ragi? Even we are also uh, like we we also we we were also be there and uh, we uh, and even uh, uh, Lord Rama also took uh, all the uh, recipes related to the paddy but you are not why you are not saying uh, uh, about the paddy why you are saying about the uh, ragi so then the debate between the ragi and paddy started so again uh, ragi's uh, paddy started that you are not uh, you are superior i am superior because your appearance is not good your taste is not good and you grow wherever you want but i am paddy i grow in this uh, particular area and i liked by wealthy persons and i am even my i am very tastier i look very beautiful in such a way this competition between the uh, ragi and uh, 
paddy will go on happening then rama says that anyhow you you need not to fight anyhow you both belongs to the dhanya varga need not to worry by saying this one rama went back to the ayodhya but this debate was continuous again they took this debate to the uh, rama uh, like ayodhya so then uh, in ayodhya in front of rama again this debate started happening that i am superior i am superior at that time rama said because of some other my official commitments i may not give any uh, like uh, verdict for both uh, for your uh, tussle so you just uh, be there for 6 months after uh, finishing my all the work after 6 months i will give the verdict for your uh, fight then uh, all the soldiers what they did they took but uh, they they took paddy and uh, ragi and they just uh, imprisoned they they kept in karagraha so for 6 months after 6 months when they uh, rama thought to give the verdict for the both the dhanyas when they both the dhanyas came uh, paddy got spoiled completely but uh, uh, ragi still it was it was withholding uh, all these characters like appearance taste everything it was having but uh, paddy lost all the things so here it comes to know that one see even though pa uh, ragi is not good at appearance it's not a uh, tastier but still it was able to maintain his uh, uh, stability or it, it was able to maintain it, it, its quality but whereas paddy even after it it, it was very uh, beautiful to look and it was a very uh, tastier but it could not maintain his uh, uh, what we call charm or it, it could not maintain uh, maintain its quality so again it indicates that ragi it has its own beneficial effect on on that time onwards there is a hype in the intake of the millet but later later like there was a after post independence day independence era so the importance of millet was gone decreasing what was the purpose of decreasing of uh, um, um, uh, acceptance of millets we will discuss later so this is the way first uh, that this is the some of the history where it says that millets are like uh, it, it it is the part and parcel of uh, uh, indian history so uh, so here again we all know that nowadays we, people are very much fond of hey siri so when we uh, say about which is the good the mobile obviously we say that uh, apple and even apple is very much known for this uh, audio technology uh, technique especially hey siri but another so people are very much fond of hey siri now but in contrast to that even nowadays at present people are also very much fond of siri dhanya so siri here this is the kannada uh, term siri is nothing but siri here it ing- indicates to shri wealth so siridanya and this term uh, preferably given by the uh, millet uh, man of india that is uh, kadar ali kadar ali coined the term siri siri is nothing but the shri shri is nothing but the wealth so here again now it has the it, it became the trend of people are running towards the uh, siri excessive intake of the millet that is siridanya so here before we discuss what exactly siridanya or millets what exactly it is they uh, they are so we need to understand whether it belongs to the grain or a, whether it is a seed or whether it is a cereal or whether it is a weed or it is a just a grass so in simple way if i want to say millet is nothing but a, it's it's a uh, food grain which which has seeds and which look uh, which are usually grown in the uh, uh, area where the cereals are grown and it here uh, in in ancient times these cereals along with the cereals uh, millets are used to grow as a weed so there was no any much preference was given for the grow, uh, growing of uh, the uh, millets they used to grow by its own in the uh, land of the cereals so it's a grass so it's a food grain which is uh, which having the seed and which grows in the cereal uh, area and even it has the quality preferably when you see the quality like uh, macronutrients like carbohydrate protein again all the all the macronutrients carbohydrate protein fat and even micronutrients uh, all the uh, things which are present in the millets can be correlated with the all the uh, macro and micronutrients which are present in the cereals so this is the just food grain which is like a cereal and again whether it is a new or a primitive as i stated one example in 15th century kanaka dasa elaborated about the importance of the siridanyas that is importance of the uh, paddy importance of the ragi and one one thing i want to say the term ragi we all know that ragi is nothing but the finger millet so even uh, in that uh, ramadhanya charita even uh, uh, kanaka dasa says that i am giving the term ragi by the uh, because rama is also called as ragava 
so from the ragava the term ragi it got because by seeing the quality of the ragi then sri ram had given the term ragi from the ragava so in such a way he wrote that charitra so here so it's it's a not a new thing it's a primitive grain and even uh, even not only in the 15th century even in our ayurveda when you see the context of ayurveda which were written 5000 years back even in ayurveda we get lots of lots of information about the millets in ayurveda they call all the millets as a kshudra danyas truna danyas or uh, like ku danyas so these are the some of the different terminologies which are used for the describing the all the millets in ayurveda so ultimately history of mille, uh, millets straight back to the 5000 years so we have numerous uh, uh, information regarding the millets in the even in ayurveda text so even after having the lots of information regarding the millets so why at uh, there was a like uh, the, there was a time like post independence why there was a total turn down for the millets so after especially in the 1940 and 50 so like uh, before uh, independence and during the and after the independence the town, there was a less uh, acceptance to the millets the purpose of uh, turn down of millet was that one is scarcity of the commodity so because there was a gradual growing of the population population to nurture each and every population so the uh, the millets uh, the uh, quantity of the millets were, was uh, were not sufficient so because of this uh, scarcity and hunger was striked because of hunger again many people are started suffering with the lots of lots of uh, uh, under uh, nutrition like complaints so to address this one green revolution came into existence in the 1960 so in green revolution because of usage of pesticide formicides or fungicides so because of these things there was a grow, grow there was a uh, like growth of many parallel cereals especially especially like rice and wheat which are having the quality similar to that of the uh, millets so at that time because of free, uh, green revolution many people will start uh, were started to uh, accept the rice and wheat and because of green revolution there was a more important was given to the uh, the growth of rice and wheat and even even that compared to the millets rice and wheat has a lots of lots of numerous recipe which even uh, not only in recipe even the taste uh, palatability was also very good to compare to that of the millets so rice wheat palatability appearance wise and different uh, preparation of the uh, different modalities everything was there in the rice and wheat which was addressing the desire which was addressing the desire of all the consumer so because of the escalating fates there was a hype in the uh, acceptance of rice and wheat like cereals and there was a uh, sharp decline in the acceptance of the millets and even in you know that uh, when we see about rice and wheat we have numerous varieties of rice and wheat so the, this is maybe because of uh, uh, what we call uh, like uh, genetic modified technology even numerous rice numerous wheat numerous paddy uh, so uh, numerous barley are there so because of numer uh, many varieties again acceptance of cereals were go on increasing and because of this there was a sharp decline in the acceptance of the millet so and even millets during when there was a like uh, uh, hunger uh, hunger like situation in the country even government also started giving lots of subsidies to the growth of the rice and wheat like cereals so there was no any importance given to the millets because of that ultimately there was a sharp decline in the millet production and consumption because of this again people started eating more cereals like uh, rice or paddy wheat and uh, barley like that and other factors why people are not accepted uh, millet based food is that appearance because when you see the millets comparing to the cereals millets are not uh, uh, like uh, like appearance wise they are not good they are not uh, pleasing and even coarseness because of this te texture and because of the taste even palatability in ayurveda it says that all the millets have the preferably they will be of kashaya rasa so because of this astringent taste so palatability will be very less acceptance of the people will be very less so because of the appearance coarseness because of the taste uh, acceptance is very low and even most of the time in ancient times uh, especially after the uh, green revolution so most of the we uh, millets which were grown as a uh, weed in the uh, uh, farming of the uh, cereals so these are used for the just as a fodder for uh, uh, feeding 
feeding the cattle as a fodder people used to you, you use these millets because of the psychology people again started decreasing the intake of millet and even in in ancient time it was a uh, prestigious test if the uh, people eat the cereals and they they are considered as the wealthy person and, and if the people they consume the uh, millets they they are considered as the like poor people so even because of this social and prestigious issue the people again started uh, declining in the acceptance of the uh, millets and even distinctiveness in cultivation and processing because here even though millets there is no any requirement of any uh, like uh, what we call uh, like any technology for this but even though there is a some requirement related to the cultivation and processing it it, it has to be uh, care, uh, grown in specific way so because of this uniqueness or distinctiveness in cultivation and processing again the acceptance of millet was gone decreasing and non availability so when you see the uh, rice when you see the pad paddy or wheat we will get many varieties of uh, like uh, food preparations related to the uh, like uh, barley or wheat because wheat say uh, uh, from wheat bread uh, bread is also prepared all the biscuit cookies all cakes everything are made out of the mil uh, uh, cereals like uh, uh, what we call uh, wheat so again varieties are there more in the cereals compared to that of the millets again this is also one of the reason why millet acceptance is uh, less and even uh, again uh, one another is that lack of awareness people they know they know that appearance wise it is not good taste by taste wise it's also not good but people are not knowing the what are the micronutrients essential micronutrients are present in the millets because of this lack of awareness regarding the uh, quality of the millets again the acceptance of millets was go on decreasing so these are the some of the factors why in after the post independence the acceptance of millets were go on decreasing but again at uh, since 2 to 3 years again there was a hype in the acceptance of millets so what is the reason so ultimately we all know that because of eruption of the ncds non communicable diseases nowadays most of the people in family two to three people will be suffering from the one or other uh, conditions of the non communicable diseases like it may be uh, diabetes it may be obesity or it may be pcod or it may be hypothyroidism like um, complaint so in every family one or people one or two people will be victim of these kind of uh, com non communicable diseases so to tackle the non communicable diseases ultimately there is a requirement of millets because all the wheat barley uh, especially wheat and uh, paddy so excessive intake of wheat and paddy may give rise to the diseases like obesity diabetes and even hypothyroidism like complaint so ultimately to combat the impact of these cereals ultimately there is a requirement of millets because millets there are numerous research says that millet will helps to reduce the all uh, over nutritional uh, com uh, complaints or over nutritional disorders like obesity and diabetes that is the reason because of eruption of ncd there is again there is a hype in the acceptance of the millet and growing health consciousness and awareness of the population as i stated because of numerous research work people came to know that one millets are enriched with the micronutrients which are deficient in the cereals so because of this enrichment in all these uh, uh, required basic micronutrients again acceptance is gone increasing and resolve the climatical issues faced by the staple food because after the green revolution when there was a excessive in, uh, usage of all this insecticide pesticide or all the fungicides ultimately it's not only spoiled the uh, grains even this, uh, these these uh, chemicals started even uh, spoiling the soil quality so because of this spoiling of the soil quality again obviously whatever you are going to grow in the spoiled uh, sand or in this spoiled land ultimately everything will be uh, like uh, will be having the poor quality so ultimately um, uh, millets are those things which there is no any requirement of uh, excessive usage or there is no any requirement of usage of these uh, pesticides or fungicides without anything naturally organic way these uh, millets can be grown that is the reason again hype is there and check this shortage of major cereals ultimately because nowadays cereals are available but still still somewhere uh, like cereals uh, people are suffering from ncds like ultimately so people are not accepting the cereals now the people who are victim of diabetes and obesity 
security like conditions they are accepting more about the millets and even to address the uh, lack uh, like shortage of major cereal cereals ultimately millets are supposed to be taken so that is the reason why hype in the millets and technology driven farming so nowadays there is no any like uh, re uh, special requirement for the farming now each and every farming is associated with the one or other technologies so numerous te technology farming technologies even millets are grown very in a good amount nowadays and even acceptability will be more and uh, make the agricultural practices more uh, sustainable possibility of importing because of e-commerce e or e uh, because of e-technologies and everything can be uh, transported exported and imported and because of the uh, like uh, availability of these uh, importing facilities again a hype of uh, millets is more and impart uh, uh, and impart the empowerment uh, to millet farmers and even because there are numerous farmers who still who grow excessive amount of millets but they are not giving any importance so even government should give importance to those farmer who are growing the millets so because of these some scenarios there is a acceptance of millets at present day i present day and even we know that uh, this year it is celebrated as a uh, mille, uh, millennium of uh, millet millennium so again what is the importance of millet so as i explained briefly that so how exactly millet growing will help to maintain the planet so it uh, as i stated there is a minimum usage of the pesticide insecticides ultimately uh, all the millets are grown organically so uh, and survive in low uh, low water and nutrients and even to grow the millets there is no any continuous supply of water or irrigation is required even in very uh, less or uh, less water so uh, uh, all the millets can be grown and even there is no any requirement of the excessive rainfall so ultimately low water is also sufficient for the growth of the millet and for farmers withstand the harsh environment because suppose if there is a growth of any cereals if there is a excessive drought happens or if there is a excessive rain happens then there will be chance of destruction of all these cereals but for uh, millets again it is a it, it even withstand the harsh uh, harsh environment it is not at not at all affected by the heavy heat and even it's not at all affected by the excessive uh, downfall or a rainfall so because of this again it supports the farmers and even for human health we all know that compared to cereals millets are rich in all the micronutrients so because of this micronutrients again one or other way millets is supporting the each and every individual to maintain and to, to preserve and to maintain and to promote their health especially micronutrients like iron zinc calcium magnesium and even it has numerous uh, uh, like uh, fibers like uh, uh, soluble in, insoluble fibers and antioxidants all the uh, phytonutrients uh, phytochemicals many things are there which literally helps to maintain the all the all the system uh, health of the all the system it may be cardiac health or it may be uh, central nervous system health each and every system of the body can be maintained absolutely because millets has high amount of all the micronutrients so because of these things nowadays people are accepting more millets again why we need to understand the concept of ayurveda uh, uh, with reference to the millets because you know that nowadays uh, when when uh, in the uh, after the green revolution so acceptance of cereals was uh, uh, increasing day by day so because of continuous usage of cereals now people are suffering with the many people are suffering with the communi non communicable diseases like obesity and diabetes but if you don't know how to consume the millets appropriately again after 50 years if i say that millet may also give the adverse effect i, I may not be wrong so ultimately whenever you are using any grain you need to have your skill if you with skillfully if you take any grain then same grain will help you lot in maintaining your health you just by seeing the trend by seeing the public if you just go on accepting the millet based diet one or other day after 10 or 50 years sure millets will also start giving lots of lots of complication so to understand to whom to how much and how we need to take the millet appropriately then we need to understand the concept very basic concepts which are explained in the ayurveda uh, with reference to the uh, especially uh, millets so as i stated in ayurveda if we say like 4000 5000 years dated back so here uh, in ayurveda it has been stated that all millets are consider as shudradhanyam kudanyam trunadhanyam smruta so these are the numerous terminologies uh, which are used to uh, name out the millets they are called as Kshudra Dhanya, Kshudra Dhanya. They are, Kshudra is that 
which are not consumed excessively that is which is left out that is the reason why in ancient times people were not uh, accepting the millet based diet kshudra dhanya trna dhanya trna in the sense it looks like uh, like trna it looks like very small it is of having very small uh, seeds and ku dhanya again it is the seeds are very smaller ku dhanya so the kshudra dhanya trna dhanya ku dhanya so on the basis of their appearance on the basis of the acceptance in the uh, social so, uh, social life so these terminologies were given so in ayurveda so there are many millets are uh, explanation regarding the many millets are elaborated but few millets even in present era what we are going to uh, see so these are the millets which are explained in ayurveda and even at present we are able to get these kind of millets like that is sorghum jor what we say jurna shammeka sava chawal barnyard millet madulika that is ragi finger millet kangu kangu foxtail millet kodrava kodo millet jo what we say ko and vajrana vajrana is not pearl millet that uh, pearl millet bajra what we say in north india and chinaka uh, and uh, proso millet gaveduka mahakaya maize and same that is little millet and kutu, kutu buckwheat kutuki that is little millet kutu kutuki atta buckwheat again these are the some of the millets major millet and pseudo millet and minor millets these are the some of the explanation what we get in in our classics and even these are the millets which are available at present so before we understand how to accept the millet based diet we need to understand the general qualities of millet so in ayurveda they mentioned that each and every millets will be having the some uh, characteristics some attributes common attributes they says that kshudra dhanyam trna dhanyam ku dhanyam smrutah kshudra dhanyam sa kashayam they are of estrogen taste kshudra dhanyam sa sa kashayam anushnam so most of the most of the kshudra dhanyam most of the millets are of cold in potency except bajra that is pearl millet it is hot in potency but other other than all the millets are in cold in potency and other like it's a lagu lekanam and it is having the quality of lagu lagu is nothing but which are easily digestible and lekana is nothing but which has the capacity to uh, scrape out the uh, over nutritional like complaint if the person is having excessive accumulation of the fat in the body to take out that one ultimately so uh, we can take the millets because millet has the quality of lekana that is scraping the all the excessive deposited uh, fat like components and it is and uh, in uh, post digestion action is it's of bitter taste and when you see the effect of all the millets in general they says that rakta uh, pitta kapha paha so all the millets have the quality to reduce the rakta pitta and kapha kapha here in very basic way if i want to say all the over nutritional like complaints whatever we are going to see it may be the prameha that is diabetes or whether it is uh, atistaulya obesity so all the over nutritional uh, diseases what we are going to see they they will all come under the category of kapha so ultimately millets will help to reduce the uh, kapha pitta and rakta and even if the person is victim of any skin diseases ayurveda says that all the twak vikaras are sneha pradana vyadi and even it's a pitta pradana and rakta pradana vyadi because of sneha pradana rakta pradana and pitta pradana ultimately millets again plays very important role so here millet have rakta pitta kapha paha and contrast to that it is a vatakara so ultimately vatakara being the vatakara so it is nowadays it is used excessively to tackle the conditions like over nutritional like com complaint again as i stated these are the samanya guna dharma samanya in the sense general qualities of each and every millets but when you see the specific quality of each and every millets then you will come to know that when there are certain changes in the attributes there are certain changes in the qualities because if you understand the specific quality of each and every ahara dravya preferably millets then that will be a, uh, that that knowledge will be helpful to apply the millets in right way because we all know that when we say in, in in general way if you ask to any public what are the qualities of millets are mota dhanya in uh, uh, like in uh, hindi belt usually it is considered as the uh, mota anaj mota dhanya quality kya hota hai sabhi log bolte hai aur ek uh, garam karta hai aur uh, ruksh hota hai isn't it but it is not like that all millets are not of hot in potency except the vajrana except the pearl millet remaining all other millets are of cold in potency so why we need to understand the specific quality of each and every millets because sub if you don't understand or if you tag 
each and every millet has hot in potency then obviously you can't consume the all the millets which are in hot in potency in uh, summer season isn't it it will happen like that so so only the vajranna that is only the pearl millet because of its hot in potency it is not supposed to be taken in the uh, warmer condition or it is not supposed to be taken in the summer if you take excessive amount of pearl millet in summer then it is going to affect your body adversely even it may give rise to the pittaja vadis even though samanya gunadharma they mentioned it is a pitta kapha rakta pitta kapha it is it reduces the rakta and pitta but if you take excessive bajra in summer season it may give rise to the rakta pitta vyadi and even it has been stated that even it will leads to the infertility like complaint it has been stated that as a pumsatva nashana so ultimately whenever you are taking the pearl millet again you need to see the qualities so which is the right season to consume the uh, pearl millet you need to assess and you need to consume again contrast to that sir, there are other uh, millets like uh, uh, proso millet or kodo millet jo kodrava hai and uh, these these are having the quality of heavy and it is of dry so while elaborating the samanya gunadharma they mentioned that all the pellets millets are having the lagu guna that is they are light for digestion but when you see specific quality of particular dhanyas especially millets especially proso and kodo millet are of heavy in nature and they are ruksha in property again being in being a heavy and you should be very vigilant to whom we need to advise the proso millet and kodo millet and time of intake of millet like throughout the day which is the right uh, which millets is supposed to be taken at which time again it all depends upon the specific quality suppose if i want to say that uh, like uh, in night which millet is supposed to be taken as per ayurveda literature sava chawal barnyard millet it is having it is a light in nature and it is snigdha it is anactus so at night better you need to go for uh, sava chawal in day time if you want to have then better you have kodo millet or uh, even kodo millet or proso millet which is of heavy so in such a way again in winter season if you want to have then you need to go for pearl millet so ange uh, see in the same way when you see the finger millet that is ragi and kutki that is little millet again they are light and dry in nature so in such a way each and every millet's characteristics you need to understand accordingly you need to have the food in random way every people are accepting the millets and random way if you start taking the millet sure millet may give rise may give rise to the many many complica complications so that is the reason we need to understand the samanya gunadharma and vishesha gunadharma and very importantly desha vishesha because ayurveda in many contexts it has been stated that yasya desha shiyo jantuhu tajya tasya aushadai ritam that is on the basis of your habitat you need to choose the food because nowadays people are very much fond of eating the millet but ragi do you feel that ragi is the staple food of north india no some part of the north india um, ragi is grown but not in rajasthan right in rajasthan we will get the lots of uh, millets which are preferably bajra and uh, jowar that is jurna bajra and uh, sava that is uh, barnard millet they are found excessively in rajasthan if these rajasthan people if they excessively take the Uh, mill uh, finger millet preferably ragi which is the staple food of south india then sure even though millet have numerous phytonutrients numerous micronutrients the same ragi may give adverse effect to the north indian people so what exactly i want to say is that ayurveda always says that you need to choose the food which belongs to the your own habitat you are not supposed to even though technology export technology is high but still we need to always stick on to the food which are grown in your own habitat so if you are a south indian you can have jurna that is uh, sorghum that is jowar you can take and you can even take the ragi if you are in rajasthan then you need to only focus much on intake of the uh, bajra that is pearl millet or jurna especially like uh, jowar or even you can take the barnyard shamyaka barnyard millet that is sava chawal so in such a way understanding of the desha is also very important because ayurveda always says that like uh, jangalam vata bhuyishtam anupam kaful gunam so here they says that any food grains which are grown in the jangal desha that is in arid region again there will be having the quality of uh, like scraping the all the uh, kapha doshas that is they will be having the lekana property more in the same way any food grains which are grown in the marshy land like south india so the, those uh, food grain have the quality uh, to increase the uh, like fat in the body 
so this this is the concept of each and every food grains on the basis of budesha so always you need to focus much on on the habitat where you belong and from where the particular millet uh, what you are eating from which place it belongs so if you don't assess these things again millet may affect your body another very important thing where we need to focus is that sharira desha sharira desha is nothing but it is the body you need to understand because nowadays every people are fond of eating the millets but do you feel that each and every millet consumed by each and every person they are going to get the advantage of millet no it doesn't happen like that because while discussing the samanya gunadharma of millets it has been stated that rakta pitta kapha paha and vata karaka being a vata karaka it indicates it increases the vata dosha so millets are not supposed to be taken by those people who are dominant with the vata prakruti who are suffering from any vataja vyadis vataja vyadis ayurveda says that all the all the disorders related to the nervous system whether it may be all the disorders related to the joints it may be sandhi vata that is osteoarthritis uh, and even uh, like chronic rheumatoid arthritis and even the person is uh, suffering from cachexic like uh, the person is very lean and if the person is uh, suffering from any uh, like uh, and diseases of under nutrition in such conditions millets are not supposed to be advised if person is uh, nowadays even people are making the uh, kids to have lots of millets it should not be done because in general millet has the quality to increase the vata dosha if you advise millets to the kids again the nutritional even they are uh, embedded with the lots of micronutrients but, uh, but according to the ayurveda they says that it it increases the vata dosha so growth of the children's may be hampered if you go for excessive advising of millets to the kid so in such a way we need to understand the dosha Uh, we need to understand the prakruti of the person if the person belongs to the vata prakruti then don't advise millet if the person belongs to the kapha prakruti if the person belongs to the kapha prakruti how to identify kapha prakruti again because why i am elaborating these things this is the uh, talk which is meant for even for general public hope some people are there in uh, uh, facebook who are uh, l- l- listening or who are acknowledging this event so to uh, make them to understand what is kapha prakruti if the person is hefty if the person is hefty and he is having uh, uh, like obesity like condition and person is lethargic and person is confined to bed and if he is not at all feeling any enthusiasm in activity so such kind of quality indicates that person is of kapha prakruti and if the person is lean if the person is lean and he, who is active throughout the day in such a and if the person skin is very dry whose person's hairs are very dry hair are very dry and uh, uh, like brittle again this quality indicates that person belongs to the uh, kapha prakruti so in such a way on the basis of the uh, lakshanas of the body we will decide the particular prakruti so here in general what you need to understand is that millets are not supposed to be taken by the vata prakruti but it is supposed to be taken by the pitta and kapha prakruti so here uh, as i was saying about the millets is supposed to be taken on the basis of habitat so these are the some of the and even in google you will get uh, like which area is dominant with the which millets so these are the some of the uh, like um, uh, uh, staple area for the millet that is staple staple food for uh, staple food uh, as a millet in these uh, particular states and even these are the staple area where the millets are grown so in such a way first you need to see which is the particular millet grown in your habitat if you are in rajasthan you need to see search in rajasthan which kind of millets are grown if you see in such a way and if you start consuming then you will be under you will be very uh, in safer side otherwise any complication may happen even uh, by consuming the millet and kala vishesha so here in kala vishesha as i stated bhumi as i stated earlier especially bhumi here bhumi in the sense again kala like suppose if you are in a winter season so in winter season as i stated pearl millet that is bajra because of ushna virya because of hot in potency bajra can be taken in the uh, winter season but same if you want to consume in the uh, uh, summer season then they you need to go for numerous processing methodologies because for example in uh, north part of uh, uh, rajasthan especially jaisalmer where we say that it's a totally like a, a, a desert area so there many people will consume the bajra throughout the year even though it is of ushna virya but it is taken throughout the year so for them it is mandatory that 
pearl millet is supposed to be taken with the excessive amount of cow ghee so it should be, all the preparation should be prepared in the ghee or a milk so the uh, purpose is to prepare the, in ghee and mil, uh, uh, milk is that it will reduce the hot in potency quality so that is the reason so on the basis of season if you are in a winter season then you need to go for taking the millets which are of ushnavirya which are of hot in potency so if you are in a rainy season then you can have uh, like even pearl millet that is vajrana can be taken so if you are in uh, like a summer season then you need to excessively take all the millets except the pearl millet because all the millets they men mentioned it is anushna anushna in the sense they are all of cold in potency so in such a way on the basis of season and on the basis of day timing as i stated shamyaka should be taken at the night barley uh, so, uh, sorry uh, pearl millet should be taken in the morning so again uh, heaviness uh, especially proso millet and kodo millet are heavy in heavy to digest better to take in the morning so on the basis of time of the day on the basis of season again the intake of millet will go on changing and another very important points where we need to understand is that observing the uh, like age of the person as i stated millets excessively like bajra are not supposed to be taken uh, given to the kid if literally if you want to give then you need to give the all the millets which are prepared in the milk or a ghee because milk and ghee will help to maintain the uh, nourishment because all the millets because of lagu and lekana in nature because of lekana in nature so under nutrition like come uh, condition may happen for when it is giving to the children preferably all millets can be given which are sanskarita which are prepared in the good amount of ghee which uh, which are prepared in the good amount of milk so in such a way you need to give to the kid but when if the person is adult and if the person is old age and if they are obese if they are fta and if they are suffering with any like diabetes like conditions then you can advise the uh, all sort of millets there is no any special restrictions so ultimately on the base of age you need to decide which millets are suitable and vyavasaya so on the base of occupation also you need to be more vigilant to uh, whenever you are taking millets because in general millets ayurveda says that they will be having this scraping effect on the body uh, that is it may give rise to the under nutrition like uh, 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 condition so if the person is of in uh, in any occupation where there is a excessive physical activities exertion like activities is happening then for them millet is not at all advised if the person is confined to the uh, office chair he is not at all doing any physical activity every time for traveling also if he is using vehicle he is confined to the bed and he is more like a, a sitting job like condition then obviously for them millet will be very essential not for the people who are very active so dosha as i already, uh, already stated that the people who are of kapha dosha and pitta dosha uh, then for them all the millets are supposed to be advised but not for the vata prakriti person or in vata javadis especially like all the rheumatoid arthritis all the arthritis like conditions uh, painful arthritis like condition and all the nervous system conditions millets are not supposed to be advised better to go for intake of the cereals in a right way again on the basis of vadi as i mentioned so again on the basis of disease condition then intake of millet will go on changing so these are the very important part we need to understand and again in ayurveda there is a concept called as nitya sevaniya ahara that is food which are supposed to be taken regularly but when you see this uh, list of the food which are supposed to be taken regularly in that one there is nowhere mentioning of the millets so they didn't given any importance to the millets in day to day uh, intake so ultimately it also gives some indication that millets are not supposed to be taken regularly and it should not be made as a staple similar to that of the cereals because ayurveda says that shilaya chali goduma yavashashtika jangala sunishani ki jeevanti balamulaka vastuka patyamulaka murdvika patola mudga sharkara that is all the cereals vegetables fruits everything they mentioned but they didn't mentioned about the millets they didn't mentioned about the trunadanyas in the nitya sevani ahara it also indicates that millets are not supposed to be taken regularly and even sanskara suppose if any people are accustomed or if the people are like uh, only millets are staple food there is no any option for other than millet 
at that time you need to go for right processing methodology so if you as i stated in uh, like rajasthan like area especially jaisalmer their bajra is taken throughout the year because that is the staple food even in karnataka if you go sorghum that is uh, jola in kannada we say it is a staple food throughout the year ragi we will eat throughout the year we will eat the jola that is sorghum so for them again we need to come up with the some of the uh, processing methodology that is if you are taking the all these uh, pearl millet or bajra like throughout the year then you need to have it with appropriate uh, cook with appropriate amount of ghee appropriate amount of milk and consume because uh, when you consume in such a way then adverse effect of barley can be minimized in such a way there there should be a sanskar of the water you need to soak you need to boil it if there is any requirement of the sprouting you can go when you adopt such kind of soaking boiling and other methodologies of preparations then that will helps to reduce or nullify the adverse impact which are present in the uh, 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 millets so in such a way sanskara is supposed to be processing methodology is also uh, supposed to be kept in mind whenever you are consuming the any kind of food and again as i stated kritanna varga kritanna varga is nothing but the preparation of food recipe so whenever you are using any kind of uh, millet based uh, preparations or whenever you you plan to prepare any food related to the millets then appropriate ingredients are supposed to be taken so if the person is prakriti wise you need to see in which uh, uh, occupation the person is in which season person is and in uh, from which habitat person belongs so everything you need to assess and accordingly we need to prepare the different method of food so it's not that bajra it should be always consumed in the form of roti Uh, if it is a like uh, sava cha sava it should be always consumed in the form of odana that is in the chawal no you can make a different varieties of preparations from the sava chawal or from the bajra so different method all uh, methods like in bajra even you can prepare about the in uh, north india churma we say isn't it churma from bajra atta you can prepare the churma so in such a way different uh, uh, food preparation should be made and accordingly we need to consume again very importantly ayurveda also emphasize much on the uh, 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 food whenever much much on the agni whenever you are consuming the food because ayurveda gave uh, the uh, very basic sutra that rogah sarve api mandagno so every diseases are going to happen because of mandagni so if it is so then whenever you are consuming the food then you need to be more vigilant that is you need to assess your agni and after assessing agni you need to choose the particular food grain or you need to choose the millets so here again as i stated most of the shri anya especially shri danyas are most of the millets uh, are lagu lekana in general way but while seeing the specific quality of particular uh, uh, millets again like it may be proso millet or it may be like kodo millet they are heavy to digest so ultimately so if the person is having very low uh, uh, what we call low uh, digestion low appetite at that time he need to take the food which are light in uh, quality that is which are lagu in nature if the person is having good digestion power metabolism then he can take the millet which are of the guru guna, which are of the guru guna or which are of the uh, what we call uh, heavy to digest in such a way on the basis of your agni you need to choose the quantity of the food and quality uh, particular quality of the uh, food and even we know that whenever we take the any food preparation which is made out of millet people will be uh, like uh, very much fond of drinking the water because bajra ka they just say bajra any any anything which is taken from the bajra and even bajra mein sufficient amount of ghee se nahi banaya hai to so after taking the bajra ke roti so people will get, people will get the uh, what sensation of excessive thirst so at that time he need to take the excessive amount of the water but again we need to be more vigilant whenever you are taking the, uh, the uh, any kind of uh, liquids बिकॉज बाजरा क्या भोजन लेने के बाद पानी ज्यादा ले लिया एक्सेसिव अमाउंट पानी ले लिया तो पानी विल दैट इज एक्सेसिव अमाउंट ऑफ वाटर विल आल्सो लीड्स टू द इनडाइजेशन लाइक कंप्लेंट सो सो व्हेनेवर यू आर टेकिंग द एनी एनी 
millets which are of ruksha guna at that time you need to prepare all the millets which are of ruksha guna with the ghee in sufficient amount so that you you won't get the excessive thirst so if there is no any thirst obviously water what you are consuming will be very less excessive amount of intake of water will also leads to the indigestion because ayurveda says that atyambu panam annam vipachita annam nirambu panam sahayava dosha excessive amount of water before food or during the food or after the food it will leads to the agni mandya it will reduces the digestion so whenever you are taking the millet based diet again you need to be more focus on the water how much you need to drink so again again as a thumb rule ayurveda always says that you need to focus on intake of food twice a day that is morning and evening so even though if you are uh, taking any food related to the uh, millets even you need to stick on to intake of twice a day meal that is prata sayam manushana machanam sruti bojitam so in such a way so we need to assess our appetite and according to your appetite you need to choose the appropriate food product so uh, these are the some of the basic ayurveda concept what you need to keep in your mind whenever you are consuming the millet based diet it is not a th it's like a thumb rule which is uh, which is supposed to be consumed by the everyone no it always depends upon the dosha kala desha desha kala bala vaya everything vyavasaya everything should be assessed after that only you need to choose the appropriate millet so according to the modern science again i am not going to elaborate much about these things very briefly i would like to explain why exactly there is a hype in the intake of the millets because when you see the macro profile of the all the millets they have the they are of low glycemic index because compared to the cereals it is having the low glycemic index that is it is not at no, instantaneously it is not going to release the glucose in the blood so because of low glycemic index and even uh, it is of high uh, in soluble and insoluble fiber because of high soluble and insoluble fiber it will give the uh, sensation of satiety because of that satiety even person don't have much food as uh, after taking any millet based food so because of uh, uh, high fiber because of low glycemic index even it will helps to uh, address the conditions like diabetes obesity and even if the person is victim of any uh, gluten like uh, uh, allergy like conditions celiac diseases even all the millets are uh, fortunately they are free from all gluten like component which is which causing the uh, allergy like uh, condition in um, many celiac disorder person so here they are all gluten free and more or that micro profile when you see so it is a rich source of tryptophan we all know that tryptophan is a mood elevator and even even it has been stated that even it will calm down your uh, like mind so being a tryptophan rich and even it is a good source of niacin niacin will helps to maintain the level appropriate level of the uh, cholesterol in your body and it's a good source of b6 b6 all this uh, what we call like uh, uh, it will uh, uh, minimize the crp level in the blood CR, uh, c reactive protein levels can be minimized if you take the millets because they are rich source in uh, b6 and even it will reduces the all ldl low density lipoprotein le levels are also uh, decreased and they are good source of phospholipids lecith uh, especially like lecithin and cephalic which are good source to maintain the all the central nervous system activities all nervous system activities are well maintained if you consume the millets because it's a good source of phospholipids <clears throat> and coming to the how exactly it is going to help in diseases as i stated according to the modern science in cardiovascular diseases especially uh, uh, it will uh, like millets most of the millets are rich source of potassium so potassium has the quality to decrease the blood pressure and even it will uh, act as a vasodilator because of the uh, decrease of uh, because of this uh, quality of vasodilation blood pressure is decreased that is the reason person who is suffering with cardiac disease who is having the complaint of hypertension they can consume because of potassium it lowers the bp and even it is a good source of fiber as i stated it is a good source of soluble and insoluble fiber uh, ultimately it will helps to reduce the cholesterol level triglyceride level ldl and and being a 
good in high uh, fiber even it will helps to enhance the hdl hdl is nothing but the healthy cholesterol level can be increased and it has numerous phytochemicals and phytonutrients as i stated earlier because of the phytochemicals and phytonutrients like lignin and other component which are going to act as a antioxidants so nowadays many people are suffering with the cardiac diseases because of all the impact of the free radicals because free radicals in the body start occurring when you exposed to the numerous condition even stress like complaint so even though it's a psychology psychological complaint stress may also produce a excessive amount of free radicals in the body so to tackle the impact of free radicals you need to go for intake of the food which are rich in antioxidants and especially millets being a rich source of all the phytonutrients and phytochemicals that will helps to uh, address the all the free radical impact and in diabetes and obesity as i stated especially millets has magnesium so magnesium in the millet preferably helps in uh, increasing the what we call like efficiency of insulin we all know that insulin is the major uh, like uh, hormone or enzyme which uh, hormone which will helps to uh, absorb the glucose from the each and every cell that is it act as a uh, what we call gatekeeper which allows the glucose to enter into the cell so when the person take the millets which are rich in magnesium so that will enhance the insulin activity and even it will even activate the all the glucose receptors which are present in the uh, cell wall of the each and every cell so it increases the uh, glucose reception uh, receptor quality and uh, even it will increase the efficiency of insulin uh, hormone so by this ultimately it prevents the diabetes and even again as i stated it is having the insoluble fiber excessive amount and even starch is good in millets because of starch and because of insoluble fiber there is no rapid gush of the uh, sugar uh, sugar level in the blood by this obviously absorption of the glucose will be very delay and because of satiety there is no any uh, recurrent uh, there is no any excessive consumption of the food and repeated consumption of the food because of the fiber it will give the satiety uh, satiety like conditions so because of this one or other way millets will helps to tackle the condition of diabetes as well as obesity as i stated because of fiber because of antioxidants ultimately all the uh, cholesterol or the lipid profile can be maintained and coming to the gastrointestinal disorders again as we know that preferably uh, like uh, like gluten what i stated millets are all free from the gluten and even they are good in the uh, like uh, soluble and insoluble fibers so because of soluble insoluble fibers and gluten free so ultimately it will helps to relieve the complaint of constipation bloating cramps and even if the person is uh, suffering from any uh, like uh, celiac disorders at that time again millet plays very important role and again there are numerous research work on the basis of research work preferably like millets uh, have the rich components uh, rich in phenolic acid tannin and even uh, like uh, it has even uh, qualities to reduce the phytate like compound component phytate in the millet is anti nutritional so but here uh, especially when you go for appropriate cooking like methodologies even phytate which is present in the millet can be taken out if phytate is taken out then all the phenolic acid and tannin which is present in the uh, millets it is going to help to reduce the conditions like or prevent the conditions like uh, cancer breast cancer or colon cancer so in, and even it has a quality to neutralize the body especially as i stated many phytochemicals which act as a antioxidant which will minimize or neutralize the all the free radicals and even uh, especially uh, they, there is a saying that they, it has a catechins like compound components curcumin like components and allergic acid like component which will helps to remove the all the foreign toxins or foreign bodies or even it will helps to take out all the uh, foreign agents in such a way flavonoids and even uh, polyphenols poly uh, is uh, sterols and polycyanin these are the, some of the phytochemicals one or other way it will helps to detoxify the body that is the reason millets are used excessively but when even though they have uh, many beneficial effect you need to adopt the ayurveda way of uh, food consumption concept or else even though even after having these uh, high nutrients it may affect your body adversely so again it's not that how each and every coin has a two faces in the same way even millets again it has uh, millets along with the nutritional component when, uh, uh, components even it has lots of disadvantage because when you see the 
uh, like protein quality it has been stated that it has a poor protein and especially amino acid profile is very poor compared to that of the cereals so that is the reason so whenever it comes uh, like uh, balanced food so balanced food are bal balanced food we are going to say when it has it is having all the essential amino acids so ultimately and even amino acid profile of millets are very poor compared to that of the cereals so ultimately this indicates that this is the disadvantage that is the reason millets can't be a regular food once in a week or twice in a week can be taken but it should not replace the major cereal intake and even it is, it is low digestibility of protein and very low in lysine lysine is one of the essential amino acid which is uh, limited in the uh, uh, millets and formation of hydrogen cyan when sprouted especially there is a uh, some claims are there again it is not at all proven some claims are there especially sorghum jor jo bolte hai na if it get sprouted it may gives the component called as hydrogen cyanide which has the quality or which has the effect similar to that of this uh, intake of uh, cyanide poisoning so ultimately sprouting of the millets are also to be limited because but there is no any research data but some people are saying about these things again certain millets preferably bajra jo pearl millet jo bola jata hai so they are considered as the gaitrogenic in substance again there is no any evidence but some scientist they just give the assumption that it may uh, worsen the conditions like gaitrogenic disorders like if the person is victim of uh, uh, thyroidism hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism where there is a uh, deficiency in the proper activity of uh, uh, iodine like component so these kind of food will again worsen the condition of uh, 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 hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism so because they are going to act as a gaitrogenic substance they are going to reduce the all the uh, cells of uh, activity of the cells of all the thyroid gland so that is, again there are some assumption and high presence of anti nutritional factors even though they are rich in micronutrients but there are other anti nutritional factor like oxalates if the person is victim of oxalate uh, renal stone oxalate renal stone he is not supposed to take excessively because oxalates will again precipitate in the form of stone and there is a more chance of renal stones kisi ko bhi kidney stones hai then he is not supposed to take excessively millets again because of oxalates it will produce as the again it will worsen the condition of uh, renal stone and phytic acid preferably we know that most of the grains whether it may be pulses or a cereals or even millets it is covered by the specific layer called as phytic acid layer this phytic acid layer if it is not removed during the time of cooking this will hinders the absorption of the all the micronutrients because we know that uh, mill, my, uh, all the millets are rich in calcium zinc phosphorus magnesium so if they want to get absorbed by the intestine there should not be phytic acid layer if it is there then it will hinders the absorption of all the micronutrients which are major component of the millets and even uh, trypsin inhibitor trypsin trypsin are uh, is the one of the enzyme which is helpful for the proper digestion of the protein so if uh, here uh, naturally millet has a trypsin inhibitor uh, component so if you can excessively consume the millet along with any other protein diet again there is a less chance of absorption of digestion of the protein or absorption of the protein because of trypsin inhibitors so these are the some of the anti nutritional factors which are present in the millets so you need to understand this concept and to get rid of all these anti nutritional factors you need to come up with the appropriate method of soaking or appropriate method of food preparation that is soaking if you just soak the water for uh, so soak the millets in the lukewarm water for whole night so that will helps to take out the phytic layer for the uh, for few percent sprouting again as i stated some some especially sorghum jowar ko sprouting karne se hydrogen cyanide like component aata hai lekin dusre jaise bajra gijra again there are numerous uh, saying that sprouting of bajra never it, it is not going to affect your body adversely so sprouting can be opted so uh, sprouting will also helps to take out all the phytic acid layer which is acting as a main uh, culprit uh, uh, which 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 will hinders the absorption of the uh, all the micronutrients that phytic acid component can be taken out by the soaking sprouting germination and even healthy way of ferment fermentation fermented food if you take uh, which are made out of millets like ragi idli or even uh, ragi dosa if you prepare if you pre um, go for natural fermentation again all the anti nutritional properties which are present in the ragi they are all 
taken out in such a way milling malting popping and cooking so these are the some of the methodologies which are supposed to be um, uh, done before you consuming the millet to take out all the nutritional factors so here very briefly uh, coming to the uh, end so uh, these are the some of the ayurveda uh, what we call like uh, uh, references regarding the particular millets and what are the gunadharma i try to uh, explain here just you can go through these things uh, like uh, which kind of uh, like uh, uh, like uh, bajra if you want to use the bajra so here recipe i had mentioned bajra roti bajra ki kichdi bajra dosa bajra ki idli bajra laddu so numerous recipe you can prepare in the same way again uh, sorry yeah recipes of bajra these are the some of the recipes of bajra because just taking one thing regularly it is not acceptable if you serve in the different way that will be well and good so you need to go for different variety of preparation of millets it may be of bajra or even it may be of finger millet that is madulika again you can see like uh, madulika roti madulika raddu sevaya upma cookies cakes so again these can be done so in such a way again this is jwar that is sorghum again numerous varieties of sorghum uh, preparations are there so you can adopt such a, and shamaka that is barnyard milk sava chawal what we call again there are again numerous preparations idli to like halwa halwa yeah even like uh, any many many things even like payasam you can prepare many things you can do and chinaka that is proso millet these are the varieties of preparations kichdi you can prepare porridge can be prepared kodo recipe of kodrava foxtail millet same thing even chakli you can prepare so the, again one or other way we have the reference in the ayurveda how we can prepare these things and coming to the last part can we make them as a staple food or wholesome food but see since 50 year like if you assume that green revolution was there in the year 1960 since 60 year we are totally accustomed to the cereals even our gut microbe got adjusted to the cereals not for the millets so when our gut is not accustomed our gut microbiota is not accustomed to the millets then all of a sudden we are not supposed to consume the step uh, like consume the uh, millet and make the millet as a staple food no it should be very gradual way because ayurveda says that uh, uh, like uh, apatyam api hi tektam shilitam patyam eva apatye which is not good for you you should quit that one but it should be done in gradually padena patyam abhyastam pada padena tejet so anything you if you want to get accustomed that should be very gradually all of a sudden if you make a switch over then sure millets even though they are good in nutrient that is going to affect your body adversely so it can't be a staple food or if it is a staple food and right way of preparation and right way of consumption should be adopted so it can't be a whole some because again it is having lacking in many uh, nutritional component so again whenever you are taking any kind of millet based it should be wise advice is that at least once or twice in a week is best but it should not be throughout the uh, day so when main key for advice or advice for you all people to intake in uh, millet based diet is that once or twice in a week is acceptable again desha kala dosha everything should be assessed whenever you are taking the food to get the right benefit again uh, 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 what is just a minute the yeah, adjustment of millets day to day practices so understanding of habit habitat that is desha two to three times a week is best advice and 30 to 40 gram per day how i came up with the quantity according to the icmr uh, ni national institute of uh, nutrition they says that if the person has to take the food which uh, like a food which gives the 200 kilo calorie then in, in among the 200 calorie he need to take the cereals of 270 gram that is 270 grams of energy should be received from the cereals so one third of cereals should be replaced with the millet so 270 gram ka one third ho gaya so almost all it is 90 to 100 grams so 90 to 100 grams per day millet can be advised again that should be distributed throughout the day again as per ayurveda knowledge it should not be like regularly taken gradually start from 10 gram gradually one week 10 gram 20 uh, 20 gram rise to 20 gram for next week and gradually go to 30 gram for in a month and for two to three months later you uh, proceed to the intake of 50 gram in such a way gradual intake if you take then sure millets may help you 
to maintain your health all else it will affect your even digestion metabolism everything coming to the conclusion so ultimately we all know that because of escalation in the all the non communicable diseases like diabetes and obesity and hyperlipidemia like conditions ultimately there is a requirement of intake of the millet but whenever you are taking the millet you need to abide to the principle because ayurveda says that sukartam sarva bhutanam mata sarva pravartaya sukam dharmatya vinachya bhavati tato dharmo paro bhavet if you want to get the result you need to abide to the dharma dharma is nothing but it is abiding to the principles ayurveda principle says that whenever you take the any uh, food thing uh, food components you need to assess desha kala prakruti every season season habitat and the condition of the uh, consumer everything sh should be assessed if you stick on to such a uh, like uh, what uh, uh, such such a principles genuine principles then sure millets will help you lot and be vigilant while gen uh, while generalizing so preferably millets can't be generalized again it depends upon the consumer and mod modulating the according to the need so if the millet is the staple food again you need to be more vigilant how to modulate which kind of processing methodologies you need to advise that should be catered to the public and you, if you are a consumer then you need to be more uh, conscious whenever you are preparing any uh, consuming any kind of food and importance to Uh, processing and preparation should be given ultimately as i stated according to your need if you want to change the quality ultimately you need to change the uh, processing methodology and after cha changing the processing methodology then it will uh, provide all the required nutrients what your body is accepting so and last but not the least again whenever you consume whenever you focus on the food always don't focus on food because food अग्री आयुर्वेद से सहसाणी जीवय तनातुर हित भोजना अलोन फुड विल हेल्प टू कीप यू सर इट विल सर्वै इट विल कीप यू और इट विल मेक यू टू सर्वै फॉर हंड्रेड इयर्स बट आल अलोन फुड इज नॉट गोइंग टू एफेक्ट हेल्प टू मेन्टेन युअर हेल्थ अलॉंग विथ दैट इवन यू नीड टू फोकस मच ऑन स्लीप एक्टिविटी फिजिकल एक्टिविटी एक्टिविटी एंड रिक्रिएशनल वेन ऑल टूगेदर when you take all together then only you can maintain the health last i i would like to conclude the uh, session with uh, uh, verse from the bhagavad gita where it says that uh, that is where is there is a importance of all these component that is yukta ahara viharasya yukta cheshtasya karmasu yukta swapna bodhasya yogo bhavatu dukkha so if you want to remain away from all sort of dukkha sharira vyadhi manasika vyadhi you need to accept yukti purvaka intake of ahara yukta ahara yukta vihara yukta kriya that is even you need to spend some time for recreational activity swapna bodhasya appropriate sleep at night are the major four tool to maintain your health so this is my submission thank you thank you for your patience listening now the session is open for uh, query thank you thank you and all uh, thank you so much dr kashnath it was really a, you know knowledgeable session not only for uh, doctors or uh, somebody but for general public also because this is millennium millet millennium year so everybody wants to have you know knowledge and it you really explained and the dishes i really love the dishes you explained what dishes we can prepare So now I would uh, like to ask anybody has any question from Dr. Kashina? Can please ask. So participant, I am just requesting if anybody has some uh, questions regarding anything, you can ask. So somebody is asking, uh, our oats are coming under millets. Some Mr. Abdul is asking. See, actually, nothing like that, because still people believe that it's a uh, like a part of millet. No, it's not exactly. It is a if you say it's a cereals, then it is more acceptable because you know that even uh, like uh, how the uh, uh, the first first thing why people thinking that oats are millets because even oats are grown as a weed initially. How exactly we uh, how the weeds are grown in the paddy field in the same way uh, similar to that of the millets even oats are also grown that is the reason why people think that even millets and oats are oats is the part and parcel of millet you, so that is not another is that oats in Ayurveda again many many like uh, different verses are there some people they consider it is the part of cereals that is shukadanya that is what we say shukadanya that is uh, nandi mukha shali and some people they said that is a nikrushtadanya that is yavaka yavaka again in 
Shukadanya, Yavaka is the one of the variety of uh, uh, cereals which is considered as the Nikrusta. But if it is a Nikrusta, uh, nowadays there are numerous research work which has been saying that oats has numerous advantages to our body. Isn't it? So I don't feel that it can be focused or referred to the Yavaka rather than you can consider it as the variety of paddy that is Nandi Mukashali. So some, some modern uh, Ayurveda specialists, they compare in, even in their uh, textbook, they mentioned it, it is best to compare with the Nandi Mukha. So Shali, so it's a cereals, it's not a millet. I think uh, it was well explained. So anybody has some other questions? See, your presentation is so good, sir. So clear. Everything is clear. <laughs> so, uh, so on behalf of HSSC, I would uh, like to pay my thanks to participant and special th thanks to Dr. Kashina. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I uh, wind up uh, now? Now it is it's going to. Work. Yes, Hello, sir. Am I yes, sir. Yes, oh, sir. So, uh, should, should I uh, log out now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neha and all the HSSS team for this opportunity. Thank you so much, sir, for your coming and, you know, enlightening us with such a detailed information about millets. Thank you so much, sir. It's my pleasure, ma'am. It's my pleasure. Thank you. हाँ तो